supporters of the Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, held simultaneous rallies across the state of the country to dump or drump up support for Obi as Nigerians marked 62 years of independence. The hugely attended rallies, which was supporters, uh, saw the supporters of uh, known as obedience, marching through some major cities in Lagos, Delta and Abia, Oshun, Kaduna, Akwaibum, Edo and Bauchi, among others, caused traffic snarls in some areas. Now, also... Back here in Lagos, women in large numbers on Monday shut down vehicular movement as they stormed various parts of the state in support of the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Asiwaju Ahmed Tinubu. Now, um, videos of women comprising artisans, traders, market women, and even professionals were marching on the streets with banners having trending online um, since yesterday. Well, joining us to discuss this is John Shaibu. He's a former member of the Presidential Com Convention Committee. And um, unfortunately, we cannot have Andy possibly join us. But let's start with you, uh, John. Uh, many people have asked and wondered what the significance of these rallies, whether they be for APC, for PDP, uh, for the Labour Party, um, and how this will, one way or the other, wean these people um, the position of a president. Uh, come 2023. Well, thank you very much um, for this opportunity again. Um, elections um, rally, when it comes to rally this period, uh, you find that, that rallies by experience are said to be to create awareness and um, to, for, to exert collective identity for a brand or a name or a political party or a candidate. So um, for me, rallies this season is to create that uh, awareness for any candidate who wants to support it. And especially when you look at the three uh, leading political parties, uh, you, see you have the you have the PDP, you have uh, APC, you have Labour Party. Now uh, you find out that a lot of them are holding rallies. What is it for? Create awareness for your brand. That is what rallies are meant for, so that people can actually key in to whoever you're rooting for in an election. So for that, uh, every political party wants to showcase what they can give and who they are presenting, so that people can actually uh, get to know them better and also probably to allow for people to make a better judgment. Because, you know, also rallies are mostly, uh, you know, to show a strength of power. The strength of force, and then the more the merrier for a lot of people. But don't forget, rallies don't actually make for voting at the end of the day. So, rallies presently creating awareness for every candidate and for the party. Again, looking at the essence of these rallies, um, yes, it's to show solidarity, yes, it's to create awareness. But then the target of every politician, the target of everyone who holds the ticket of any political party is for whatever is being done, whether media wise, in person, to, you know, um, change to votes. Are we doing enough as a country, as political parties, as social, um, as, as civil societies to pass the right message? Because it's one thing, we see the social media movement, we see, um, you know, the PR movement and all of that. But how much information is out there as to the vote casting, the importance of the PVC, and how these solidarities would, would translate to votes at the end of the day? Now, uh, the, 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 the truth of the matter is, the rallies, uh, you know, by experience, does not translate to actual voting. Because you find out that the same people that come out for one public party come out for the others, majority. So you, you, some, of, some people that win votes might not even come out on such rallies because, you know, you don't know what might, you know, what might occur on such rallies because rallies, in a sense, have a negative and positive effect. You know, sometimes, look at what happened in Lagos where some people were being brutalized. Some of us brutalized on Saturday. Those are kind of the negative effects that some people might not want to just want to make a statement on uh, election day with their votes. And uh, for me, I see uh, rallies just, like I said, awareness. But when it comes to the nitty-gritty of it, creating that polling, that voting strength, or who they pander to, to vote for, you find out that 
uh, it has to be an engagement, uh, you know, exercise at different forums where you have uh, meetings, town hall meetings, you have engagement on social media, you have, you know, meeting, meeting of stakeholders, telling them what you can present, and then you have, you know, you know, people, uh, you know, being able to key into your activities or what you want to present for the nation. So that is, uh, uh, you know, what I feel is rally is all about it's not about singing on the streets. It's not about carrying placards. It's not about wearing T-shirts. Because I can tell you, like I said, uh, rallies are empirically, you know, have said to be for awareness. Because I remember some, some years, uh, last election, people, some people came out, what they want, T-shirts. They want face cap. They want uh, souvenirs you can carry home. But on election day, you'll be so shocked that you see such people. So that is why a political party, especially my party, engaging beyond rallies, engaging people, meeting them at their doorsteps, meeting them at their various, uh, what's it called, platforms, to tell them what actually we need to do. That is what I call rally for me. It's not the street jamboree that we see all around. The party is doing that, but yes. But the main issue of rally, if you tell me, is the awareness and identity uh, for that brand is at every forum where they can meet with stakeholders and ten Nigerians what they are ready to present. I know that you're a party man, obviously, you're, you're from the PDP, but then let's, let's look at it from a very objective perspective. You know, take away the bias for a second. Um, the, the candidates for the presidency, they all have their job cut out for them, whether it, whether it be the Kwankwasos of the NNPP, Labour Party, um, APC, and of course the PDP. Now, over the weekend, it was a battle of who could work out better, who's, who's feeter than the other. And we could see that um, happening between your candidates and the candidates of the APC, which, of course, um, um, came as a result of, you know, rumors that uh, people were wondering uh, what was wrong with the presidential candidates of the APC. But then, um, how well do you see these presidential candidates faring in terms of the PR um, how they're handling these issues, what they're putting out there as opposed to what people need to hear. How well are these guys doing in terms of knowing that, you know, 2023 is not going to be a walk in the park? Now, you know, straight to it, Atiku has his five-point agenda, which has been promoting over the, over the years. You know, on the inauguration of the Presidential Campaign Council at the ICC International Conference Center, what the focus there you see, there are book presentation of what he has done, the restructuring plan and all this plan for the nation. He has been speaking about it at different forums, at the MBA, uh, stakeholders at the MBA uh, conference. He spoke at the legal business uh, community, uh, you know, uh, conference where they had a town hall meeting and all that. And on different platforms, in social media, at different PDP platforms. You know, so for me, uh, Atiku is, was just catching phone when he had to do with that uh, bicycle or that uh, exercise thing. Because he has presented, out of all the candidates that we have, is only Atiku that prepared, only Atiku that presented his position, what he, he intends to do for the nation, and how he's going to go about it, not missing what about it. So, Atiku I did, I did for say, me, is I did quite say you prepared. should be unbiased, but you seem to be very biased, but go ahead. No, well, for me, I, I, can, talk, I can talk about my principle. I can talk about my candidate better. As a Nigerian, Why? Because I know how well do you think that these presidential candidates are selling themselves? I'll ask again. No, he is selling himself very well because he appears at every function he's called for to explain what he wants to do for Nigerians. But we didn't, how, we didn't see an APC candidate there. We didn't see him appear there. Only the Labour Party, only uh, uh, was Obi. Atiku appear. Are you and from day one, the preparedness even can tell you from what the party did, nominating our vice presidential candidate, having a conference as what we call presidential uh, uh, convention. We had we named right on time our vice presidential candidate. We inaugurated our presidential uh, campaign council right on time, and our candidate has a prepared and reviewed plan covenant he has with Nigeria. So this is not is not is, is not a, a thing of bias. It's a thing of truth which everyone can identify. I remember one of these uh, meetings that uh, one of the presidential candidates uh, had. Then when he was our vice president, 
He said, Atiku is ready. Atiku is prepared to get going. And in one of his interviews also, Atiku said, look, the, my first objective when I get in, I am going to have my, my cabinet ready. That means that's the man that's ready to work. That's the man that's prepared to work, who has a focus and have a timeline for okay. every issue. You don't right. have to since, delay for six months, this conversation, one year to, this, to have, this conversation have, is not about promoting Atiku. I'll leave you because you, you don't seem to want to but, answer my question. But I'm going to tackle you on Atiku. If, right. if Atiku was unable to win hearts previous years, he was unable to win hearts in 2015. Nigerians, we did not want him in 2019. Why do you think that we would want him in, in 2023? Again, what has changed from the story he's been telling and all of the, you know, the ideas he's been churning out in order to get Nigerians to vote for him? Why, why would Nigerians change to look in his direction in the first instance? Now, look at the power of incumbency. With all that transpired, the shenanigans that transpired in that election, you could tell PDP won the election. But it is. This is Nigeria. We accepted the result. All right? But every Nigerian will tell you truly that Atiku Abaka won the election. But let's, let's, let's leave that. But I can tell you, someone that has a plan, that's been saying it, that is prepared for it, that has it articulated, what else do you expect of such a person? That means this man has an agenda. And what is the agenda? To move this nation, restructure this nation, devolve power, get devolve power to, to down to local government in which everybody will feel impact of governance by also making sure that he, 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 he engages the legislators who will also buy into this plan. He pushes it in and ensures that everybody key in. And when you key in, you find out that you interrogate all these plans, their workable plans, that is ready to set Nigeria on the right footing to rescue it and rebuild it back to where P uh, APC have kept it in a, in a dire state that needs a, but many you know, will say, But many will, say, many will say that the APC inherited this so-called corruption or what state. I mean, nobody's saying that what, what's happening right now is any force of the PDP, but then since we're talking about precedents, um, the, the PDP ran this country for more than eight years. And, of course, it was inherited by the APC. Why should we in any way want to give that power back to the PDP if they themselves were voted out because of incompetence, because of corruption, because of lack of, you know, a certain kind of willpower to deal with certain issues? Why would we want to give that power back? And, again, let's not forget... In 1999, your candidate was also part of the ticket uh, that r started the democratic rule or democratic run in the country. So again, I ask, what story does he have to tell us that is any different from what he's been telling us over the years? And what has changed in him all of a sudden that would make Nigerians really warm up to him? You know, you cannot, you cannot take away experience. In this what? is a ticket. The, the, uh, let's say, this is a ticket of Obasanjo Atiku ticket. Don't forget when you talk about corruption, who initiated having EFCC to check financial corruption? Who initiated ICPC to check corruption? That same ticket did it. That's the same ticket that came on on $29 per barrel and ran this nation, managed it to the point in which the next admission took it up. And Jonathan took it up to a, a nation that you can say that is the, almost the largest, fast-growing economy in Africa. So what are we saying? We understand what is playing out, the propaganda that went out, that uh, the party is corrupt and all that. Don't forget, individuals, uh, we are, they are, it will be taken out of the party because most of them are returned back to APC where they turn them to say, yes, we are not saying that there is no corruption in, in any system, political system. There is. But when you look at it, what is the state of Nigerians at that period compared to now? If you are talking about corruption, what, what, what were you buying rights? Tell me, Marianne, what were you buying rights back then? How much were you, were you transported to your village? How much were you entering flight? Same government people call corrupt. How much were you were, were school fees? How much was dollars at that time? So when we look at this issue and place it beside what is happening now, please, we're not, we're not, we're, we, Atiku is ready by experience to ensure that such system does not 
do, such things since it does not, uh, you know, uh, kind of grow again from what APC have put us in. If, if they could push him for EFCC to come up, if they could push him for ICPC to come up, what, what do you think you will bring on board? Well, I want to say thank so you. So, for me... Yeah. John, unfortunately, we, ha we don't have time, but I would have tackled you on some of the recent happenings within your party and the allegations by Governor Weekly. Don't forget, against we, are doing, party we are chairman. doing everything. We are in peace. There is peace. It's a family affair, and when you fight, it's you make up, peace, and really. what you do, you get yeah. united. Yes. Well, uh, I, yes. Wish, I wish you Look all at, the best. Today, today I, at the I meeting, wish the PDP at the all the best. Wicked said, Wicked said there's peace, and we're united. Okay. Listen to it. I wish the PDP all much. the best. I, I really, I, I say may the best man win, but Nigerians will be the ones who determine that. But always a pleasure. John Shaibu is a former member of the PDP Presidential Convention Committee. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Thank you, Maria. All right. And that's the show tonight. But thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, I would like to quickly give you my take. Here's my take. Party politics is always a difficult terrain to find a consensus. Every election brings with it one faction or another with a laundry list of grievances that the emergent candidate is expected to appease. From dissatisfied primary candidates, better known as sore losers, who would rather burn down the party's chances at the polls to contingents of the party that have been waiting since the last election to assert their influence. It is a part and parcel of the process. Now, serious candidates must be ready with a big bag of favors to satisfy such people. This is the one reason why it seems no matter the promises of aspirants, things don't ever seem to change. While a consensus may be difficult to arrive at in our politics, we can all agree that everyone likes free stuff, even I do. Now, it's certainly true that some candidates face you know, this kind of internal crisis more than others. However, it may simply be evidence that such candidates are harder for the egos of many within the party to swallow. Hence, we get reports of a refusal of some party leaders to work for the candidate and even demand for interest to be pacified. But when it comes to elections in Nigeria, tis the season to be greedy. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening. <music>